If there's something you don't want to go wrong, it's a nuclear test. But sadly, they have gone wrong, and when they do, things get super serious super fast. These are nuclear tests that went horribly wrong. Number 20. The Marshall Islands Now, I actually mentioned the Marshall Islands before, but now I'll go into more depth. You see, these were islands in the Pacific Ocean, and starting in 1946, the United States decided that this would be the perfect place to go and test their nuclear arsenal. And over the years, a whole lot of bombs were tested. In fact, the number of tests done on the island was 65. And due to that, the islands, especially Bikini Atoll, is known for having high radiation levels. But how high? Well, it's apparently 10 times higher than Chernobyl itself. Under the water near the atoll, one can actually see a lot of the brittle underwater craters that were made by these bombs that once went off. Technically speaking, people do live on that island, but it's only about 10 of them. And what's more, you're forbidden from staying on the beaches, as that's where the radiation is actually the highest. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Bainberry Incident You know something bad happened when you have something called an incident, because that clearly means something went wrong or somebody screwed it up. It's just really bad when that word's attached to a bomb like the Bainberry Incident was. This happened in 1970, so just a little bit after the Tsar Bomba test, and the United States decided to do another nuclear bomb test as the Cold War was still happening. With one small twist, this one would be underground. The original nuclear and atomic bomb tests were held underground until more about these devices could be understood, but it hadn't happened in a while. So you'd think that they would know what was about to happen, right? Well, no. Although the 10 kiloton device was detonated at 270 meters below the surface, a large cloud of radioactive dust was released into the atmosphere. And if you can't guess, that's pretty bad. Like, really, really bad. It was so bad, in fact, that the outpouring of radioactive dust into the atmosphere was equivalent to if we had just decided to detonate a bomb in the atmosphere itself. Point of order, we're sure someone's thought of doing that, and that's terrible. Terrifying. But it doesn't stop there, because what goes up must come down, so the dust that was shot up by the bomb was later spread across nearby towns, cities, and states by the wind. While the government claimed that the damage was minimal, some test site workers actually died of cancer only a few years after the testing. After the Bainberry incident, nuclear testing at the Nevada test site was suspended for six months pending an investigation, and it would be another 20 years, though, before the U.S. signed the treaty to ban nuclear bomb testing. Number 18. Standing Under a Nuke Just think about that title for a moment. It's not really a joke, it's not an antidote, or even a hypothetical scenario. Because in 1957, 12 years after the atomic bombs got dropped on Japan and wiped out two cities, the United States held a very special test. And that test? It was to detonate a bomb in the air, almost 10,000 feet off the ground and have a group of six people below it so that they could show that people have nothing to fear from a nuclear bomb. I'm not joking, that was the actual intent. It gets even worse, and even more stupid, because the people who agreed to be under the bomb when it exploded were actually unpaid volunteers. As well as a cameraman who was not a volunteer, we feel bad for that guy most of all. Let's pause here and analyze the stupidity that's present, shall we? The United States government at that time knew about the dangers of these bombs, yet somehow wanted to prove that they were okay for people. And how in the world do you think that would work? Well, naturally, when the bomb went off, it emitted a light that nearly blinded the men, a sound that greatly scared them, and then they had no protection from what was to come down. 
And what came down was radiation. A whole bunch of it. So much so that all six men got cancer. Now, to be fair, many lived long lives despite the testing, but that's not exactly something to brag about, considering how lucky they were to survive the whole ordeal in the first place. Number 17. Starfish Prime no, Starfish Prime is not another name for Starro the Conqueror, or at least I'm pretty sure it's not. But in fact, Starfish Prime was the name of a high altitude bomb test that happened way back in the year of 1962. Now, despite all the tests that had been going on at the time, and this was five years after the last entry, the United States still hadn't learned anything about these bombs, which was proven given what happened in this particular incident, the Starfish Prime test was successfully detonated at an altitude of 400 kilometers and no one was seriously injured or hurt. That's the good news. But the bad news, however, is that we didn't really understand the power of electromagnetic pulses at the time. And when the bomb went out, it sent an EMP that was way larger than anyone expected. And as a result, despite it being detonated a good ways away, the EMP hit part of Hawaii. That knocked out about 300 street lights, set off numerous burglar alarms, and even damaged the telephone company's microwave link. That meant that no one from the main island of Hawaii could make a call for some time. This is another good reason for nuclear testing treaty bans, because if you don't fully know what's going to happen in a test, that means that there's always a chance that something could go horribly wrong. Number 16. Lake Shagan. Now, as I've already proven to you, while nuclear, atomic, and hydrogen bombs are incredibly destructive, they technically have the ability to create things. You know, like a whole bunch of radiation or an EMP burst and so on. But in the days of the Soviets, they wanted to create something that was truly special with their bombs, an entire lake. That's right. They really wanted to do this, and I have the proof. The nuclear test occurred in a place that I cannot pronounce, and the yield was equivalent to 140 kilotons of TNT that was meant to produce a large conical crater that was suitable for a lake. Which, if I'm being honest, is kind of a clever thing from a certain point of view, because this would basically create a massive spot for water to be held without all the trouble of digging and heavy planning and engineering and so on. But wait, you say, if they went and used a bomb to make a lake, wouldn't that lake be full of radiation heavily? Well, yes, yes it would. But the Soviets didn't realize that until it was far too late. As such, Lake Shigan, even to this day, is a highly radioactive lake, so much so that it's called the Atomic Lake, and for obvious reasons you're advised not to go there. Furthermore, despite a certain ban going on at the time, this bomb caused a radioactive plume that apparently could be felt all the way to Japan. So, in this case, it's an A for effort and a D for execution, but another A for Atomic Lake. Number 15. 1961 Goldsboro B-52 Crash the next entry may sound like a joke story at first, but is in fact one time where we almost became the home to a nuclear disaster of our own doing. The 1961 Goldsboro B-52 crash was an accident that occurred near Goldsboro, North Carolina on the 23rd of January, 1961. A Boeing B-52 Stratofortress carrying two 3-4 to four megaton Mark 39 nuclear bombs had an incident in the air and had to abandon the craft and its payload. That's right, the payload being nuclear bombs. Most of the crew was able to get out without any issues, but a few did die due to the crash. And as for those bombs, well, they went down, down, down and landed but didn't blow up. One of the bombs was safely ejected from the plane and was able to glide down to the ground via parachute and land in a tree. The second bomb went and landed in a muddy field and evacuation of the bomb was delayed due to weather conditions and the state of which it was in. 
After the incident, the military said that we were in, quote, no danger of the bombs going off as they weren't in an armed state. But that was later revealed to be an absolute lie. Both bombs were not only able to detonate, but they were pretty dang close to going off. Both of them were literally one switch away from detonating in North Carolina. That's the risk that these bombs have, even under the best circumstances. If a single thing goes wrong on that plane and they hit the ground the right way, then it's lights out and goodbye East Coast. Number 14. Neonoxa Radiation Accident there are many who might say that the most dangerous part of a nuclear or atomic or hydrogen bomb is that of transporting it or being in its blast radius. But even just the act of trying to put these bombs together is a danger and trial that no one should have to go and face. And for proof of that, you don't have to go back decades. We only go back two years. Russia has been working on testing some very special nuclear-powered missiles, and they had a radiation accident occur at one of their facilities in 2019. According to them, they had an issue with an isotope power source that led to multiple scientists and military personnel getting killed or injured. However, due to the less than reputable nature of Russia in recent times, many, including the United States, didn't believe that story and demanded answers from the Russian Federation. Several fishermen then stated online that they witnessed the accident. One saw a 100-meter column of water rise into the air after the explosion, and another one says that he saw a large hole in the side of a ship which had been at the site of the explosion. further putting the official statement of the nation in doubt. Those who weren't immediately killed by the accident were taken to hospitals to be treated for radiation sickness, though even with their expertise, some actually perished from it. Number 13. Castle Bravo Castle Bravo was the first in a series of high-yield thermonuclear weapon design tests conducted by the United States at Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands, as part of Operation Castle. When you hear high-yield, you know that means they were detonating some really powerful bombs, and the results are still felt to this day. That's because the Castle Bravo bomb was the most powerful bomb that the United States had ever dared to test, with a megaton yield of 15 megatons. Now you might be thinking, alright, that's impressive, but the Tsar Bomba was more powerful, and you'd be right about that particular point. But the United States did not actually intend to launch a 15 megaton bomb, they were aiming for six. That's right, they accidentally made and dropped a nuclear bomb two and a half times bigger than they intended. Oops! And then, of course, there was the fallout, because since they didn't fully understand the power of these bombs back in 1954 when the test took place, the radiation damage was much more severe than anyone could have guessed. Just on the ecosystem level, the radiation and blast itself destroyed lots of coral reefs near the island. Then the radiation plume spread out in all areas, and when it did, it injured residents on the supporting islands. Even a Japanese fishing vessel that was well away from the blast had its crew infected with radiation. Oh, and Bikini Atoll? You can go there, but you can't stay there because it's still full of radiation. Number 12. The Demon Core now you just got chills down your spine because of this thing's name, didn't you? The Demon Core. Don't worry, I'm not going to make fun of you for it. In truth, that is a pretty evil sounding name for a bomb. The Demon Core. And yet it was appropriate because it was something that was made during World War II. The Demon Core was a spherical 6.2 kilogram subcritical mass of plutonium 89 millimeters in diameter that was made by the infamous Manhattan Project to be used as the core for one of the early atomic bombs that they wanted to test. In fact, it was actually going to be the core for the third atomic bomb that the United States would drop on Japan should the first two not end the war. A very scary thought in hindsight. 
But what happened to it? Well, it went super critical not once, but twice during the testing of its power, and then it was accidentally put in places that weren't well shielded and meant to honestly expedite certain matters. Now you'd think they would have seen the problem in that. As a result, the core poured out radiation and killed a couple of scientists due to the exposure, but of those two incidents, it was later nicknamed the Demon Core. And we honestly don't blame them for doing that. It just goes to show you that the men of the Manhattan Project were incredibly brave, and yet even with their brilliance, at times they had absolutely no idea of what they were doing. Number 11. The Storax Sedan and here we have yet another underground nuclear bomb test, this time from 1962. And not unlike a certain Russian bomb, it had a humanitarian purpose to it. No, it wasn't meant to make a lake. Why would you do that in Nevada? But rather, they were testing to see if a bomb could be used to help with mining. There are several problems to that logic, but for now, I'll just let it go. The point is that they wanted to see if these nuclear devices could help people in any way whatsoever, so instead they just hurt a lot of them in a very specific way. The radioactive fallout from the test contaminated more U.S. residents than any other nuclear test, not a record that you want to be proud of. Another record that they set was the largest man-made crater in the United States. Going back to its purpose, though, after realizing the fallout from the radiation and other factors, it was made clear that such activities wouldn't be worth pursuing. Probably for the best, for the same reason the lake test was a bust, that being radiation. Had this been used in a mine, all the miners would have had to wear hazmat suits, and all the materials themselves would have had to have been washed clean of all contaminants before they could be used and distributed. Again, that's an A for effort, but an F for execution. Number 10. Chernobyl now you all knew that this one had to be somewhere on the list, because not all nuclear tests were done for bombs. There are plenty of nuclear reactors that can go boom if the right circumstances occur, and Chernobyl is, by and large, the biggest and most horrifying example of that occurring in human history. This would take place in 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat. The accident occurred during a safety test on the steam turbine of an RBMK-type nuclear reactor. During the planned decrease of reactor power in preparation for the electrical test, the power unexpectedly dropped to a near-zero level. The number 4 reactor became unstable as the power couldn't be restored, but the test continued because the crew were not warned of what could happen next. As a result, reactor design flaws caused an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction that led to the disaster that we all know about today. The fallout from Chernobyl is still felt even in the common day, especially in the city itself. It used to be a very highly populated city in the Soviet Union, but now it stands completely abandoned due to the radiation that poured out from the plant. The city, along with much of the environment that surrounds Chernobyl, is still highly irradiated, but you can visit if you wish, however only in certain areas. Many hope that an event like this never takes place again. Number 9. Operation Plumbob First and foremost, Plumbob. I mean, you guys really couldn't think of a better name for a test than Plumbob. Get some writers on your crew. Operation Plumbob was a series of nuclear tests conducted across a span of months in 1957, and the operation consisted of 29 explosions, of which only two didn't produce any nuclear yield. So that's 27 devices with plenty of nuclear power if you're keeping track. But why do all of these tests? Well, it's simple. They were gauging the use of them for various things, which included missiles for a whole lot of ships and various ranges. Not the least of which is what we now know as the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. Oh, you still want more? 
Well, now I'll talk about pigs. Over 1,200 pigs would be used during this experiment for the sole purpose of seeing how radiation would affect them and how they could be protected. They were given suits of various materials to see just how they'd react, and I feel bad for those pigs for the record. While this may not be the dramatic accident that many of the other entries have been, it does show you in horrifying detail just exactly how much the United States felt about their nuclear powers, that they wanted to see what all they could do with them. Number 8. RDS-1 now we all have to start somewhere, don't we? And for Russia, after the events of World War II where they saw their then ally, the United States, almost blow up Japan into tiny little pieces, they realized that they needed to get in on the nuclear action. And so they made their first atomic bomb in the form of the RDS-1. It was detonated on the 29th of August, 1949, at a test site in Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic after top secret research and development as part of the Soviet atomic bomb project. To ensure that they had a truly working weapon, the Soviets put all sorts of aircraft around the bomb site and then went to make sure that over 1,500 animals were also there, also that they could test the effects on life. The test turned out successful. And that's why it was such a horrifyingly bad thing. Because it proved to the world that the Soviet Union could actually make these bombs, and that also meant that they could make others like the Tsar Bomba we spoke about. And that meant that they could absolutely drop it on other nations should they want to. Thankfully, they never got that far. But it was that point that the Cold War truly began, and the nuclear arms race was on. Number 7. The Tsar Bomba You know the saying, save the best for last? Well, we're not doing that here because I need to talk about a bomb that was said to be so powerful that if the test went on like it was believed, it could have destroyed the entire world. That's how I'm starting this one. The year was 1961 and the Cold War was on. It was all the rage. The United States and Russia were in a mad dash for one thing, being power, and in this case it was nuclear power. The United States had already proven their explosive prowess with the two atomic bombs that occurred in Japan, but with the evolution into the nuclear and hydrogen bomb, the now Soviet Union were determined to prove that they had the best bombs around, and they did that in horrifying fashion. The Soviet Tsar Bomba had a yield of 50 megatons, or the power of around 1,500 Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs detonated simultaneously. That's a whole lot, but that's still not the whole story. Because the test was originally supposed to have a yield of over 100 megatons. The scientists involved were smart enough to reduce it in half because they felt that the fallout was going to be just too much. After the Tsar Bomba was dropped, they truly realized the weapon they'd created and feared that if they'd done the intended test, the destructive nature would have been much greater. So much so that one of the men who helped to make the Tsar Bomba then later dedicated his life to trying to remove these weapons from the face of the earth. To this day, it's the biggest bomb test ever, and no one dares to try and overtake it. Well, because we enjoy our planet. Number 6. Mighty Oak Now, as I've already shown you, the United States has never been afraid to do nuclear tests in order to see how things would react to radiation and blast areas, and in the case of the Mighty Oak test project, it was meant to see how re-entry vehicles for the MX and Trident missiles would react to radiation. This was another underground bomb test, and it was one that would have the vehicles and missiles in question put in tunnels with a complex underground structure with the bomb going off some distance away. Whatever could go wrong with this? Well, according to the DoD, nothing went wrong. But then reports began to leak out that things had very much gone wrong and no one was willing to admit it. As it would turn out, there was a problem in the tunnels, as the radiation levels were apparently so high that they would soon go into the air and cause problems for the surrounding areas. After this accident, a lot of protests would go down about the nuclear tests themselves. Number 5. 
Novaya Zemlya. Sometimes you just can't help but wonder if certain places are doomed before they even realize they're doomed. Such was a question that was posed for the Russian town of Novaya Zemlya. This was a critical place in the Soviet Union in the Cold War for a very specific reason. It was the host town for their nuclear testing, and that also included the famous Tsar Bomba. Over its history as a nuclear test site, the city hosted more than 224 nuclear detonations, with a total explosive energy that was equivalent to 265 megatons of TNT. Now, for comparison, all the explosives used in World War II, including the detonations of two U.S. nuclear bombs, amounted to only about two megatons. Tons. That's a lot of nuclear power put into that town. After public knowledge of the test zone within the town was released for all to see, many protested what had occurred there, but that didn't stop Russia from starting up tests again in 2012. Number 4. Trinity Now, as I've stated before, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? I didn't always have such a wonderful voice to bring you great YouTube videos. Just kidding, I did. In 1945 in New Mexico, the first ever nuclear test was done in the form of the Trinity test. Nicknamed the Gadget, the plutonium-based implosion-type device yielded 19 kilotons, creating a crater that was over 300 meters wide. These tests were vital in the minds of the highest U.S. officials because of reports that the Axis powers, specifically Germany, was going to do these tests themselves. And if they had been able to make the bomb first, the world probably would never have survived. The problem, though, was that what happened afterwards was equally as bad. The United States and Russia became embroiled in a nuclear arms race to the extent that there was a doomsday clock that was made in order to warn when the end of the world was to come. One just has to wonder what would have happened if no such weapon had ever been made. Number 3. Fukushima Nuclear Disaster Sadly, there's another disaster that was very much like Chernobyl in its own right, and that was Fukushima. This disaster took place at the Fukushima Nuclear Power Plant in Japan over a decade ago in 2011. It's the only other Level 7 nuclear disaster ever recorded, which was the same level as Chernobyl. What's worse in some ways, though, was that this wasn't the fault of the nuclear factory workers. A mix of an earthquake and a tsunami made it happen. In the days after the accident, radiation released to the atmosphere, forcing the government to declare an ever larger evacuation zone around the plant. This culminated in an evacuation zone of a 20-kilometer radius, and over 150,000 people had to be evacuated in order to keep them safe. Number 2. Operation Red Wing now back to the United States in the year 1956, where a series of 17 nuclear tests were done under the name of Operation Red Wing. This was meant to be the first test of the second generation nuclear weapon. The problem, as it were, was that like other bomb tests that we've talked about, Operation Red Wing had results that were meant to be under a budget, but didn't always go that way. But overall, they were able to get the results they wanted, and were able to control the yield for these tests, and because of that, we made even more powerful nuclear weapons. Number 1. Fallout And finally, we'll talk about what's the worst part of all of this testing, the fallout. Because with every test, whether it be big or small, no matter how isolated it could be, we made the world a more dangerous and unhealthy place to live. The 2000 report of the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation to the General Assembly states that, quote, the man-made contribution to the exposure of the world's population to radiation has come from the testing of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. From 1945 to 1980, each nuclear test resulted in unrestrained release into the environment of substantial quantities of radioactive materials which were widely dispersed in the atmosphere and deposited everywhere on the Earth's surface." 
end quote. And as we know now, having that radiation around can damage our bodies. That includes giving us all kinds of cancer, and thankfully we're not in a state where we have to fear exposure all over the place, but given enough explosions and deposits into the atmosphere, and we might just get there someday. Were you surprised when you heard some of the tales of these bombs in action? Which of them do you personally feel was the most crazy incident that ever occurred? And do you know of another bomb that could fit on this list? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.